This tutorial is going to be about GUI elements, or graphic user interface elements. It will also contain information about vectors, which apply to both 2D elements on the screen and 3D elements in the world. So before we jump into the more complex stuff, let's look at some of the basics that come with the characters. You'll see here the health meter that was shown on the top left of the screen actually is just a simple line of code. Let's break this down. First we have show meter, which is part of the interface menu. Next is health, which is actually part of the combat system. Now this is the value that changes the bar. Then we need a modifier that sets the max value. So then the meter will use max health as the maximum value that the health can be adjusted to. In the object's preferences, you can change the max health of the player, and that's what the bar uses as max health by default. And the meter will show max health as the maximum value shown. So even if you increase the player's health above the max value, it will only show up to the max value. And then the final tile, which is found in the modifier section again, is screen location. So we have a new meter here that sets the adjusted value at counter and then it sets the max value at 50. So this can also be another variable if you have an experience point system and you want the experience points to raise each time the player gains a level. All of these are customizable. And then I've taken the element and I've scaled it to 50% and we've adjusted the color to blue. You can actually pick any color you like you go into the variables and go to color. In here you can pick new color and adjust it to anything you want. But they also have a whole menu of pre-picked colors to choose from. Let's say you're making a real-time strategy map and you want the player to choose their own color. You can use this value to make a consistent color throughout the entire team. We're just going to set it to blue for now. Under the player it shows the counter's value at 50. And then on the bottom left, you can see the new bar that was created. Now I'm going to change the value of the counter, and you can watch as it's adjusted. So that's how the meter elements work in the graphic user interface. Okay, I'm going to make a logic cube right here. It doesn't matter where you put any of these interface elements. They will always show up as long as they're activated. So we go to create interface and then here you'll see all of your options so this is what the fade out option looks like it fades to black and it just stays there adding a duration timer will change how long the fade effect works the game over trigger should be run when specific conditions are met and this will be really important for levels that have scoreboards so that it can tally up your score and upload it to a leaderboard uh, now let's talk about the show counter. There's a new programming tile called global and it's just like using the logic cube that I talked about before. So I've changed it around now that we're using another object and I've made all of the counter variables global. If you like Zelda games pay attention because you may want to use this in some of your levels. The show counter actually shows an array of GUI elements and right now it's showing the max at 5 and it's showing whatever the counter is set at. So this is what the default show counter looks like. You'll see the value under the player there and as I decrease it to 5, 4, you'll see they actually start to dim. 3, 2, 1. It's pretty cool. You can see that I'm able to scale the crystals of the show counter to whatever size I want. But for some reason, I can only use the crystals. If I can figure out a way to do this, check the description of my video in the future. I'll either give an explanation below or I'll make a new video explaining how. You can see the crystals are a little bit smaller, but for some reason I can't get them to change to anything else. Alright, now I'm going to show you how to do some cool things with text. So you go to display, then go into values and pick text and just type in something new or you can create text variables for names and things like that. Uh, this can overlay object elements and it can help with menus and 
whatever else you'd like to get across to the player. So we're just going to use new for now. Alright, then go back into modifiers and you'll see some really cool options pop up. You can change the font size, make it extra large, uh, and you can also do some neat things like on the second page here, it shows type on speed. So this is the characters per second that it types each letter. Unfortunately, in the beta, you can't change the color or size of this, as you'll see in a second. So if you want to change the color and size of your text, it'll have to be static for now. So you can see I've changed the color to red, and I've made it extra large, and I put it in the center of the screen. Let's take a look at what happens. Alright, looks pretty good, it follows the player, so you can see how this could work as a way to talk to the player if you need to, or for tutorials. You can also display 3D objects as 2D elements on the screen. Let's say you're creating some sort of magic system and you want the player to look through a book uh, or a shop window, and you can actually put these elements on screen with menus next to them so that the player can look at them and decide which spell he wants to buy or use. Uh, under the icon section, there are different types of icons that you can use as like tutorial elements to help make it easier to play your level. And this is what it looks like when you see it in game. Okay, so now you see that one element is being overtaken by the other element. Uh, that has to do with something called priorities. When you're editing a display, you can go to the modifiers and click on priority. We'll set this priority value to number one, and we'll set this guy to two, and let's see what happens. So now you'll see number two is above it, and number one is on the bottom. To make it a little easier to understand, I've set three object elements on the screen with priorities one, two, and three. The higher the priority number is, the higher up on the screen it is. You can see that even at different positions on the screen, the priority list stays the same. So B is three, A is two, and the ring is one. Even if you set the priorities to the same number, they won't overlap. The only way to get objects to overlap on the screen is with vectors. So you can see in the menu here, vectors are a type of variable, and they contain three data points, x, y, and z. All right, so we're gonna display the stone ring. We want to say on screen at, and then we wanna use our vector, which is set uh, to zero and zero. So our vector, which I've labeled GUI1, is set to zero, so x is 0 and y is 0. And since this is going to be on the screen, those are the only two variables you need. You don't need a z because that's for a 3D aspect. So we're going to copy this down here. Now they should both be on the same position. Now they're right in the same spot, so if you ever want to do like quick time events or anything like that, you can have something like this flash and the player can hit a button and it'll do the next thing. So if you look up at the top right, that is position 1, 1. And now at the bottom left, they're in position negative 1, negative 1. So that gives you an idea of the scope of the screen. So this simple bit of code here just shows that the player's location, which is a new vector variable I set up, equals me position, which means the player's position. Me refers to whatever the object is. If you don't use position, it won't store the variable properly and you'll get 0, 0, 0. Within the vector menu, you'll see some existing vectors, like wander direction and starting position. These are actually empty, and they just have them as placeholders so that you can set them later. So right here, you'll see that I have it set up, so if we push the middle mouse button, it will display the player's location at position me. So let's check that out. As I'm walking around I'm just gonna push the middle mouse button and you'll see those three variables pop up. So it'll give you an idea of where the player is in the world. So from left to right we have X, Y, and Z. 
I've turned on the surface grid to make it easier to understand. So looking at it from this perspective, the left and right lines are the x-axis. The y-axis is actually vertically up and down. So that leaves the z-axis, which is forwards and backwards within the world. So I've placed a letter A above the logic cube without 3D scaling to show what that does. So you can see no matter how far away I get, the A stays the same size. So if you wanted to do some sort of futuristic HUD like Metroid Prime, you could have map locations pop up if the player presses a button, and it can even go through trees or backgrounds so they can see exactly where to go. Uh, something like that would be really cool. The easiest way to display 2D objects in the world is the way I've shown you. But let's say you want to do something a little more complicated. So let's say I want something to appear right on top of this hill. I would just save those three numbers, X, Y, and Z. Uh, I'll round them off to negative 27, 13, and 81. Alright, let's see how this works. Now as we walk over to the hill, you can see it's at the approximate location that we wanted. It's pretty cool. You can also have elements detect the player so that this won't show up until it gets closer. Without an object, it's a lot harder to detect the player and create actions based off that. Alright, so that should get you started on uh, creating your own custom graphic user interface. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to help you out. So thanks for watching. If you have an idea for a tutorial you'd like to see in the future, let me know below. Thanks.